All right, so now we're going to show that um, if that a uniformly continuous function preserves Cauchy sequences, basically. So if you take a Cauchy sequence in the uh, in the domain, uh, and then or at least in the set where the function is uniformly continuous, uh, if you have a Cauchy sequence in that set, then the values of the function on that Cauchy sequence will form another Cauchy sequence. Uh, so this is actually very straightforward to prove. Um, so this is theorem 19.4. Uh, if f is uniformly continuous on s and x or sn, let's say sn is a Cauchy sequence in s, then uh, f of Sn is also Cauchy. Okay? Right, so uh, this is really not too bad. Um, so basically, all right, so we want to show that f of, f of Sn is also Cauchy. So let's just go straight to the proof here. Um, to show that it's Cauchy, right, we have to let epsilon be greater than zero. So let epsilon be greater than zero, All right? So now the idea is that um, we can, right, the fact that Sn, <clears throat> Sn is Cauchy lets us control the distance between different values of um, like different um, Sn's basically, right? Like Sn and Sm, we can control that. And if you think about it, like Sn and Sm, those are points in the input space. And so we know that because f is uniformly continuous, if we can control the distance between two input points, we can also control the distance between the two outputs at those points, right? So the idea is that like the Cauchy criterion for Sn lets us control the distance between the Sn's and then that controlling that distance lets us control the distance between the f, f of Sn's basically, okay? So, um, so the first, but we, you know, whenever that, the, whenever things like work that way, we've seen a couple examples of this, examples of this before, and we always have to like kind of work backwards. So it's like, first we have to figure out how much, like how close the SNs have to be to each other, um, in order to make the values of f be within epsilon, right? So first we invoke the uniformly continuous property. So since f is uniformly continuous. There exists a delta greater than zero, such that you know yada yada uh, for x minus y less than delta with x and y in S. We have f of x minus f of y less than epsilon. Right? Okay. So now we we know the target of like how close S n and S m have to be to each other. Right? to make f of Sn and S f of Sm be uh, closer than epsilon. So, um, and I think actually this fact, just to take like a quick aside here, um, the fact that we're proving right now about uniform continuity, I think is actually another like good motivator of like why we're interested in the property of uniform continuity, because I think this actually, this fact really expresses something deep about uniform continuity, which is like uniform continuity is the property that characterizes functions which preserve Cauchy sequences. I think that's that's actually worth you know paying close pay, paying attention to, and it's a property that's worth actually setting down in writing and and characterizing. Okay, so um, okay, so we have our delta. So now we can invoke the Cauchy criterion on S n to make sure that the SNs stay within, you know, SN and SM stay within delta of each other. So then since SN is Cauchy, we can find N such that for N and M greater than N, we have SN minus SM less than delta. Okay, so then for n and m greater than n, we have 
uh, f of Sn minus f of Sm plus then epsilon, okay? And that's, that's the whole theorem. So pretty, you know, short and sweet. Uh, I think, well, okay, so just to cap this off, um, this actually lets us very easily prove that certain functions are just not uniformly continuous. Actually, before I do that, um, I want to give you guys another lecture question. So, uh, sorry, well, this will be a, a two question lecture. So this is lecture 13, uh, qu question two, uh, is the same statement true for continuous functions. So if f is continuous on s and sn is Cauchy, is f of sn Cauchy? Okay, so take a minute to think about it, uh, write your answer down, and uh, when you unpause the video, I will solve this. Okay, so um, the answer here is no, as you might have expected. Just, you know, I mean, honestly, I kind of gave it away because I was saying that uniform continuity is the property that characterizes when this happens. So, you know, why would we need uniform continuity in this theorem if it was true for continuous functions, right? Um, so you should expect the answer to be no. Uh, and here's an example of where this fails, okay? So clearly it would be, we, we won't be able to come up with a counterexample if we choose, uh, you know, if we make the set S be like closed or if we make the Cauchy sequence SN if, if the sequence Sn actually converges to a number inside of S, then um, that would break, that would make it impossible to build a counterexample, right? Because then of course, F of Sn will converge to F of that number. And so then F of Sn is automatically Cauchy. So we have to have a situation where it's like, Sn is a Cauchy sequence that like in R it converges to something, but the limit that it converges to in R is, is not inside of S, okay? So a, a very simple example of this is uh, take S to be, you know, 0, 1, and Sn, or let's say, you know, whatever. Sn is like 1 over n. Then this is clearly Cauchy, right? Um, and then take, so now we want a function where like the values of F at 1 over n form a, a sequence that's like not even Cauchy, right? So an easy example of that would be a function that makes whose values like diverge to infinity, right? So we could take f of x equals like one over x, right? Then f of sn is n. This is clearly not Cauchy, right? This is Cauchy over here pretty clearly, but f of sn is not. So mere continuity for if you're looking at an arbitrary set s the mere condition of continuity is just not nearly enough to guarantee that f will carry a cauchy sequence to another cauchy sequence okay um, and this actually gives us another way of seeing um so i'm just gonna like transition right into this example um this is example six so this means uh, f of x plus one over x is not uniformly continuous on zero one. So in their example, or we could apply this to f of x equals one over x squared. They, they consider one over x squared in their example, but I mean, it's, this, it's the exact same logic, right? Where f of Sn in this case would just be n squared, which is not Cauchy, right? So basically this gives us like um, a handy way to argue that certain functions are not 
uniformly continuous on a given set because if we can just find a Cauchy sequence in that set where the values of the function do not form a Cauchy sequence, then that automatically means that, I mean, that, that contradicts the conclusion of the theorem that we just proved. So that would mean that the function can't possibly be uniformly continuous on that set. Okay. So uh, yeah, uh, that, that's it for this section. Hopefully it was uh, fairly short and sweet. And in the next one, we'll talk about extending, extending continuous functions or uniformly continuous functions. So.